I want to encourage everyone to live the life that they believe in, whatever that looks like for them. As long as you are respecting one another, I respect the way that you want to live. So I hope that this channel can help you do that. I really do. All right. Hello, thank you so, so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm just gonna jump right in. I wanted to make this video because I know that not everyone watching my videos knows me personally and it felt important to just give a little bit of context into who I am, how I got to be, where I am, and what I am, and even for those that do know me, it's kind of rare that we get the chance to sit down and just hear or share our stories, and so I thought this would be a fun way to just tell you all a little bit about myself. So yeah, I'm gonna do that now. I had a really lovely childhood in so many ways. I was really adventuresome and playful and loved to just play imagination games and like I had a bunch of toys that I would use to create worlds and scenarios. I loved magic of all sorts. My family was super into Harry Potter. I loved to get dressed up and have my sisters dress me or my cousins put makeup on me and Halloween was a big holiday for me and my family. It was a really nice way to just be allowed to, you know, play with clothing and like go outside and have it just be like normal and like everyone was doing it. Looking back now can tell that I used my costumes as uh, excuses sometimes, as like ways to sort of justify wearing the things that I wanted to wear but like didn't really feel safe wearing. Um, or like safe asking to wear, which was like, you know, long hair. I wore a Lucius Malfoy wig. I went as Lucius, which is maybe the most random Harry Potter character. I feel like I have no special connection to him other than he had long hair, so I got to wear a wig. And he had a cane that had a wand hidden in it, so that was dope. Um, and then I loved anything I could use makeup for. I liked, you know, as a skeleton or like a bank robber. I had like black on my face. Um, just like, you know, under my eyes. And I was a punk rocker, it was a classic one, where I had dyed pink hair and like fake uh, these earrings before they were actually pierced and nose ring and just felt like, yeah, I can wear jewelry and it's fine on Halloween. So I loved that, it was so much fun for me. And then of course, growing up, that becomes less okay or it feels less okay to want to wear wacky things and play dress up um so you know middle school rolls around and that's really when i felt like things shifted in terms of what other people's priorities were what other people cared about and talked about um i think everyone that's at least middle school age can probably resonate with this that like it's the time when things like boys and girls and crushes and sex things like who become just this really exciting part of life and it's really new and um, talking about it is exciting and fun. And I didn't really feel like connected to that at all. I didn't feel like I could participate in the same ways as the other kids. Um, and I'd known for a long time that I was gay but it wasn't until middle school that it felt like that was gonna be like a really big, important part of my life because from then on it felt like I had a secret. It felt like I was holding on to something and that, that sucked. That really just it defined a lot of middle school and high school. And the first time that I said I was gay, I remember I was in my bathroom downstairs and I whispered it out loud to myself. I just needed to like hear the words out loud for the first time. And I did, I said it, I said like, I'm gay, really quietly, just in case anyone was listening. And I remember thinking it was like the first moment that something felt forever. Because in childhood, time didn't have as concrete of a definition in my mind and saying I'm gay out loud for the first time was like 
I realized it was forever. I realized that I would be a gay kid, I would be a gay adult, it would always be something about me, and that felt super scary at the time. So that sort of became like an overarching umbrella identity of my own that really influenced how I navigated the world and um, the things that I expressed and didn't express, and I didn't even consider like gender its own separate thing that I was or was not like tackling. It just felt like being gay. It was like my thing um, that I had to hide and um, figure out. And that's not to say I didn't have accepting people around me. I have like amazingly accepting family and friends. I'm from San Francisco, Daily City. Um, it's just that even in the most comfortable environment, it didn't feel like I was ready. I just wasn't ready to say the words and um, I don't know, I just, I think it really happens for different people at different times. So um, I stayed in the closet for middle school, high school, and then into college a little bit. I kind of went to college with like an idea of, oh, maybe I'll just be out and how easy would that be? Um, of course, it's not that easy, and I stayed in the closet a little bit in college, but then a few months in, it really was just like building inside of me, and I just knew that it was time, and so one night I told my friend Paris, who was staying over at my dorm um, to have a little slumber party, and it just came out. I was like, I'm gay. And then from then on, I came out over and over and over. I feel like that's the really big misconception about coming out stories is like you have one and then you're just like out but of course that's not the way it works. You come out all the time. Um, it gets easier obviously but I told my dad in person. I told my mom over the phone. I told a lot of people over text and that felt like weird at first. I felt guilty for not having that like beautiful sunset in person coming out experience with everyone but now I think like that is totally just unfair and like a pressure to put on somebody who's already doing something that feels vulnerable vulnerable and scary. Um, so I'm all for doing it however you need to. It is not about the person that you're telling. If they feel disappointed that they found it in text, too bad. They can get over it. Do whatever you need to do to feel safe and comfortable and at whatever pace you need to. So I came out and then it still felt a little bit like I had something to tell people or like a little secret inside of me. It didn't feel like I was fully out. It still felt like I was pretending. Um, and that was because I felt like I needed to get more specific with people about who I was attracted to, which I'd also always known. Um, and that was older men. I liked men that were much older than me and it just, it just felt true. It didn't feel like a choice at all. It's not a choice. It didn't feel like it had to be like a problem or a big deal. It just felt like like being gay was it was just a part of me and my truth. Um, but that felt actually a lot scarier to tell people because even though I'm in San Francisco, you know, being gay is a relatively visible thing here. Most people in my social circles are like super accepting and liberal, but um, Liking older people is not something that many have a lot of exposure to, and the stories that you hear about intergenerational relationships are usually skewed on the side of power dynamics or money or, um, a, it's like a weird creepiness um, embedded into it, and that is, like, it's not what I wanted. I didn't want to be a sugar baby. I didn't want to have some weird power dynamic. I just wanted, like, I don't know, a loving, nice relationship with someone who liked me and who happened to be older and a man. So I ended up having a second coming out of sorts to my family and friends and that felt really nice and really scary. I remember telling my mom at the kitchen table, this was probably my junior year of college, uh, I said, you know, I'm attracted to much older people. and. Um, I'm so glad I did because then it felt like ugh, I could finally just like let myself off guard a bit. I think other queer people can probably relate to that feeling of just being like 
aware of the surroundings and the conversations and if it's gonna shift to something that is gonna like expose you, it's really exhausting. And to have that like simmering in the back of your mind from middle school until middle of college is just so tiring and it's a real big relief to be able to feel like your cards are on the table and people will do with them what they will. Um, people might have questions, people might be resistant at first or forever, but just to like have it out there and not be tiptoeing around certain things is, uh, it's just like a breath of fresh air. So that felt really nice. Um, and then once that was all sort of like out there and about there, I started rethinking gender and looking back to childhood and like being playful with dress and I had some memories of being um, a kid and playing with my mom's makeup and trying on like my sister's clothes and stuff and I remember feeling really like scared at the time of getting caught for something but I didn't know what it was that I was afraid of being caught for doing. I didn't feel like a girl I should say. Um, it just felt fun and I didn't want people to make a big deal out of it. There was one time that I went to piano lessons after having tried my mom's mascara on and somebody there, a girl from my uh, middle school grade, this was in eighth grade probably, asked me like, do you have makeup on? And it was a really innocent question. She wasn't trying to like out me or anything, but I just felt so like seen and exposed and like, oh my God, heart sinking to my stomach that I went to the bathroom and like rub, 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 like rubbed my eyes raw. Um, Cause I didn't want people to notice and like make a bigger deal out of it than it felt like. Um, so I stopped doing that for a long time. Um, I probably played around, you know, here and there with makeup as a teenager and in high school. Um, but I never wore it out or anything. I think I wore makeup to prom. I think I wore like foundation. It probably looked horrible. Actually, I'm not sure it did, but that felt like a safe kind of environment. Cause it's like prom, you know, like look your best for photos. Um, but I just kind of like didn't really think about gender as like a part of my identity until it was really like junior year of college that I started exploring that a little bit more and I went to Prague and I bought my first dress. It was this polka dot number and I had wigs that I would wear out and I would play with makeup. I bought like a red bold lipstick that I wore in Prague and um, I bought some eyeshadow, I guess where I got my ears pierced. Actually, it was like a big space of exploration. I haven't really thought about that a ton as like proc specific, but it is like really where I started exploring and that felt so good. Um, it felt really right and like didn't have to mean that I was coming out as anything else necessarily. It still felt just like me, but like in fun ensembles and with some makeup on and um, that kind of springboarded, I think, just where I'm at now in terms of my gender, which is feeling much more like non-binary than anything else, where I still identify as a man and non-binary, and I've yet to sort that out completely within me. Um, I'm in no immediate rush, but I feel like a male in some ways in the sense that that's a way that I can be perceived and it's privileges that I can have in the world or that I do have. Um, having a masculine appearance and being comfortable in male clothing, masculine clothing. And then I also feel like not tied to that as like my one thing, my one option where like I am a man, therefore I wear men things. Like that does not resonate with me at all. Um, so in that sense, I feel very non-binary, where I love to express myself and wear fun, flirty things. Um, and it was a slow progression to where I am now with my gender and a lot of reflecting, a lot of like scary moments of like first time walking out of the house in X, Y, or Z, like I remember my first time in Prague wearing my polka dot dress, I went outside, I think I had a beret on and big sunglasses and like headphones and it felt like, you know, safe in my little world and it still depends on the space that I'm in, whether or not I feel like totally comfortable dressing as I want to, um, but compared to when I first started and compared to like who, how I was in high school and who I felt like, I just am in such a different place. In some ways I'm reverting 
back to my childhood self and allowing myself to play and explore and just like be curious and wear what I want and you know be imaginative and write stories and and that's like that's a beautiful thing. Former Brendan, you had it right. The world tried to crush your joy for a little bit, got into your mind, but we're circling back. For as scary as so many things felt, just a few years ago, now I'm graduated, I'm wearing whatever I want, in a lot of cases, most cases, I'm in a relationship with not one, but two sexy older men, and I'm living at their house, and it's really great, and totally unexpected uh, in a lot of ways. Um, I'm totally out and really proud of who I am, and I have a lot of learning and life ahead of me, so... I'm not perfect at anything, by any means. I never will be. I hope to never be. Um, you know, nothing in my life is perfect. My relationship with myself, with others, with my gender, with my sexuality, it's not perfect. Um, I have insecurities, I have all the things that make us human, anxieties and fears and worries and doubts. Um, but I also have a lot of positivity, I have a lot of optimism, I have a lot of just smiles and like curiosity and poses, I don't know how to like, what word this would encapture, like I just have a lot of um, life I feel like to give. And so if you need a little bit, follow me on this journey and we together will create a space, create a world hopefully that's a little bit more colorful and embracing of different things and leans into fear rather than away from it. So yeah, thank you for listening to this little brief history of me. Um, I want to sign off by saying that I am now wearing my mom's mascara and blazer and nail polish and blush and eyeshadow in a video that I'm giving to the whole world. And that feels so right. That feels so good. And I'm really grateful and proud of being able to do that because um, it wasn't so long ago that I felt my heart sink when somebody noticed that I was wearing my mom's mascara and now I'm like please look at me please do the same please just live your life um, so yeah that feels really good thanks mom mm -hmm, mm -hmm. love you um, she would hate how I didn't take my previous nail polish off before doing this but shh she doesn't have to know, except she does watch my videos. Hopefully to the end. Maybe this will be a test. Um, all right, well, I'm going to sign off now. I feel like I've been rambling a little bit. I didn't fully plan out this video because I wanted it to feel just like it was coming from me from within. So I will see you guys hopefully soon. And I hope you guys have... Actually, I don't want to say you guys. I want to not, like, gender uh, the audience. So I hope you all have really wonderful days and reach out with any questions or comments and I will be with you soon, okay? Bye! <laughs>